Sesh Dile and welcome to In Conversation with Tibet TV. This is Sakina Bhatt. For today's episode, I have with me a doctor who is currently leading the Zero TB initiative to eliminate the most common disease, tuberculosis. He is a faculty at John Hopkins Medicine. He is Dr. Kunchak Dorji. Dr. Kunchak Dorji, welcome to our show. Thank you for having me. So, uh, Dr. Kunchokla, firstly, can you please start by explaining to us briefly about your project, which is the Zero TB and its significance? So, uh, Zero TB in Tibetan Kids Project, it is an initiative of the, John, uh, of the Tibetan Dalek Hospital and the Johns Hopkins University, and it is implemented under the auspices of the Central Tibetan Administration Department of Health. So, basically, the aim of our project is to eliminate tuberculosis in Tibetan children and adolescent population, and eventually eliminate TB in the Tibetan population itself. Under this project, uh, when I was working at Delic Hospital uh, back then as a TB medical officer, we know that uh, we understood that tuberculosis has been a major problem for the Tibetan population. And also, uh, at that time also, Delic Hospital collaborated with the Johns Hopkins Center for TB Research and we did a case finding. We went out into the schools and monasteries and we found that TB has been a very big problem, especially in the younger age population. So that led to our initiative that if we want to eliminate TB in the Tibetan population, we need to start in the school children. And then also a new approach has been that we are now screening people for latent TB infection and then providing preventive therapy. This has never been done before in the Tibetan community. So right now you just mentioned that it is more common amongst the Tibetan children and that is how you started a project from them. So um, what do you think is the main reason? Why children? The school children and also the nunneries and the monasteries, they live in congregate settings. In the dormitories, there is, uh, in the past, there used to be a lot of overcrowding. There were two to three, even two kids sometimes on one bed. Nowadays, the situation is improved, but still then, people live together. And when people live together with r windows remaining closed, with low ceiling, not much of sunlight, and then during the winters, the windows remain shut. When a child coughs, the cough lingers, and then transmission happens. Tuberculosis is an airborne disease, so it's very easy to get transmitted to each other. So uh, TB is uh, high and still very common among the Tibetan community, like you said right now. Yeah. But why is it only the Tibetans that are prone to, I mean, like, why is it mostly only the Tibetans that are prone to this disease? When Tibetans first came into Tibet, to India, we do not know whether Tibetan people back in Tibet at that time were exposed to TB or not. We do not know whether TB was even prevalent there or not. So it could be possible that a completely uh, the population that came into exile in India were completely susceptible with very little or no immunity. And then all of a sudden, they were exposed to TB, led to a big problem. Healthcare access was poor. They were overcrowding. They were unemployment. Over these years, we have really improved mm -hmm. the program uh, in terms of going out into the community, screening people. So it, the rates have come down. In the Tibetan schools that we studied or that we worked in, in the first phase of the Zero TB project, we detected a very high case rate of around 916 per 100,000 in the boarding schools. Mm -hmm. But there was one caveat, there was one important factor. In many of the cases, they were asymptomatic. They, oh. they do not have any symptoms. Okay. So basically what that means is we were detecting cases at a very early rate, very early phase. So which is very important because the earlier you detect the case, there is less transmission and then also curing the disease is easier. So those were some of the factors, yeah. So Dr. Kunchokla, when did you start the project? So this project was initiated in 2017. Yeah. So, so you have been doing the research for a very long time. So according to you, when are you assuming the complete eradication of um, this disease? So Zero TB Kids is a public health project mm -hmm. that I would think would have a tremendous impact uh, even I would say in five years. I cannot say that we could eliminate TB in five years, mm -hmm. but then we did see a significant decline in the number of TB cases over one or two years of implementation of a project. I did a modeling study in which I modeled uh, 
you know, what is the TB case rate in 2017? And then if we decrease the TB case rate by 10%, where will it get in 2025? And I see that in around 2025, we are almost equaling or getting better than the rate that would be in India. Okay. So which I think is very a big achievement. Now uh, the situation is that the rate of TB in Tibetan population is almost three to four times that of India. Right, and in the, in the children under 15, it's like almost 12 times that of Indian children, so which is unacceptable. So our first target is, okay, let us bring it down to a rate that is comparable to the Indian population, and then we'll go further from that. So the world wants to eliminate TB by 2030. We would definitely like to get it done before that. Like you mentioned earlier that earlier when the older generation, older Tibetan generation, when they had come into exile, due to the lack of education and the poor standard of living, there were, um, the tuberculosis rate was more high back then. But these days, because of the development of standard and also because of the education improvement, uh, still this disease is a big concern in our society. And you said that there is a lot of improvement, and yet it is a big concern. So what do you, like, why do you think so it is? Congregation is a very important factor. And mm -hmm. I say congregation, living together. Also, Tibetan community is really, I would say, very closed, right? So transmission, so that is another factor. Mm -hmm. um, now, in the past, uh, because of all those reasons that I described, there was an epidemic of TB. Usually, children and adolescents, they are at higher risk, right? Especially very young children. And why when, is that? So it is related to immunity and also the natural history of the disease. So you know, right now, most of the TB cases that we are detecting in the schools in the monasteries, the adolescent population, the young adult population. Now we are you know, having a renewed focus on that population itself. So how serious is TB's case in the Tibetan community than compared to the other communities? I would think that tuberculosis is a serious condition. It is one of the most important public health conditions for the Tibetan people. Mm -hmm. Number one, TB is a serious disease. It takes six months to get cured. And then another factor is that if you have multi-drug resistant TB, it takes almost 18 months to take, get cured. And in the past, and even now, very painful and toxic injections need to be given. So it's, it's a big problem. If a child gets TB, and especially drug resistant TB, you know, number of school years are lost and people die. Dr. Kunchokla, you know that it is not only the responsibility of a doctor to cure the sicknesses and the diseases, but it is a responsibility of each individual and the community. Yeah. So according to you, what kinds of precautions should an individual or a community take to eliminate this disease? I always think that uh, tuberculosis is a disease, is a public health problem. Mm -hmm. It is a problem of the community. So the community has to solve it. We are very fortunate to have blessings from His Holiness the Dalai Lama at the start of our project implementation. Mm -hmm. So other precautions that I think are important is every parent, every, every person, they have to understand how tuberculosis is transmitted. If your child is getting cough for more than two weeks or having weight loss or you know, fever and having night sweats, some symptoms of TB, you need to go and get a checkup. In this mm -hmm. health, public health program, we are for the first time implementing TB preventive therapy. It has been done unanimously in the United States and in all the developed conditions. And probably in India, we are really the first uh, program to be able to implement TB preventive therapy on a population level. So preventive therapy literally means that if you have infection with tuberculosis, you provide preventive therapy. Right? Mm -hmm. So that prevents the TB bug that is latent, latent or that is literally sleeping in your body from waking up. So this needs to be taken before a person catches TB? Yes, exactly. So basically TB preventive therapy is about preventing tuberculosis. You know, you are totally healthy. We, when we go to school, we say, oh, the child is totally healthy. Mm -hmm. There is nothing to worry about exactly when you have, like, you know, get concerned about mm -hmm. when you have TB infection. You know, we always tell them that, okay, it is just that you have TB infection, but you do not have TB disease. It is very important to distinguish between these two. So what are the symptoms of TB infection? 
uh, because in TB disease, you know that you're going to get TB. There are signs. Yes. So for infection, like how do an, how do an individual get to know? Mm -hmm. For TB infection, there are no symptoms. That's why we do not call it a disease. Then how do you know that the person has So we TB? have to test by doing a skin test. Okay. Right? We do a skin test and then there is a swelling. Mm -hmm. So when there is a swelling, the, the, the healthcare provider will measure it and then they will feel it and then they will determine that there is TB infection or not. And based on that, then we for, when you have TB infection, we rule out that you do not have active disease. Okay. We do a chest x-ray to make sure that your lungs are clear so, and you don't have any symptoms. And once you do not have any symptoms and you just have TB infection, then we call it latent TB infection, mm -hmm. right? And then we provide preventive therapy. So by providing preventive therapy over these one or two years, we are now seeing that the rate of TB in those who children who took preventive therapy versus who are not able to take preventive therapy, the rate is almost like 10 times higher in those who are not able to take preventive therapy. Okay. So this is really, I think, a, a great initiative, I would say, and a way forward uh, for our community to see the end of TB. So uh, you think that it is good if a student, before he goes to a boarding school or any gathering, he, it's better if he does a test and see if he has a TB infection? Yeah, exactly. So that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's what we are trying to do right now under the Zero TB Initiative. Mm -hmm. um, because it is a TB elimination initiative, mm -hmm. we have been trying really hard to get it going for as long as possible. So every year, as new students come in, we have been screening them. Right? What do you mean by screening? So when we do screening, First thing is we actively go out into the community, okay. not just stay at the hospital and wait for patients to come over. Okay. And the second thing is mm -hmm. we ask them for symptoms of TB, mm -hmm. right? And then if there are symptoms, then we ch do x-ray. When there are problems in the x-ray, then we do further investigations. Uh, so Dr. Mujola, you have been working on this project for a very long time. So what are the new things that you encountered through your experience? One of the experiences that I, would, that I would like to share is that when we first started the project, it was not easy. And that was Late in 2017? Yeah, it was in 2017. Okay. Latent TB infection was totally new concept for the community. Mm -hmm. People do not know what is latent TB infection, what is active TB. Everybody knows TB as TB disease, right? Okay. So getting the community to understand, to accept mm -hmm. it, that was a big challenge. But we innovated. And we were able to uh, overcome that. Uh, so that was one thing. And so it is important to spread awareness as much as possible. The more the community knows about it, the better it is. And so lastly, Dr. Kunchakla, how do you think that the awareness on TB should be raised amongst the Tibetan community? I think there could be a number of ways, mm -hmm. right? One thing is I've been always uh, saying thank you to the media people for generating awareness because it is mm -hmm. media is one portal, you know, especially the Tibetan community, they really go to the Tibetan media. And the second is, I have been always uh, saying that the spiritual leaders, I think they have a very important role to play. And, and why is that? Because uh, our community is built such that our spiritual leaders, we really mm -hmm. respect them. Okay. We you know, listen to their words. Mm -hmm. And then during their uh, teachings, if there could be some words uh, some um, teachings or some advice on staying healthy, uh, not going into deep, but really staying healthy. I think that would go a long way to convincing the community about healthy lifestyle. And then also trying to understand how people would like to receive health education. Mm -hmm. I think that is very important. Yeah. So Dr. Kunchakla, it was really nice doing this conversation with you. Thank you so much for speaking to Tibet TV. Well, thanks for having me. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next episode of In Conversation with Tibet TV.